What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. When it comes to League of Legends, there's quite a few gameplay interactions and special tricks that really go underappreciated, but in a lot of cases they can be pretty useful. And to help me with the video today, I've brought in my friend Arcadian to help me break things down. What is up friends, it is me, Jeremy. <laughs> I am just kidding friends, it is not Jeremy even though that I know my impression is that of which Poro Dream is made of. It's actually Arcadian, how's everyone doing today? Now I'm a fellow League of Legends educator, the creator of Did You Knows, and the Tips for League series. If you'd like to see some more of my stuff, then you can find my channel in the description below. But for today, I'm going to be helping out Jeremy, so let's jump right into it. Alright, our first tip on the list is actually one of my favorites because it's kind of silly, but it's actually a lot more useful than you might think, and it involves using wards in teamfights. When you are versus the enemy AD carry in a teamfight or maybe an AD carry champion like top lane Quinn or something, a majority of those kind of players what they like to do is attack move, or attack move click as a way to make kiting easier and smoother. So what you can do to take advantage of this is if you're someone trying to fight them, what you can do, you just put a ward down during the battle right in front of you, and if they're attack moving, they're probably going to attack the ward once or twice instead of you. It works the best versus AD carry players and AD carry type of champions, and it's an interesting way to actually avoid some damage randomly in teamfights. And I know it sounds kind of hilarious, but a lot of those players do make use of the attack move feature, since it's honestly such a good way to kite opponents, so that you can abuse them and put them on tilt by using a ward in this way. For number two, those Rengar mains of the world, did you know that you can actually jump from the bush above red buff onto Dragon, Baron, or Rift Herald? Because the jump lasts a couple of seconds after leaving the bush, this lets you walk right up to the wall, and if you have vision on your target, you can jump right over it. You can use this for some pretty daring escapes. Into number three, Wukong has a little crazy interaction specifically with Jarvan the Fourth's ultimate. When Wukong uses his clone, it pushes him forward a tiny amount, and he can use this to jump through J4's walls. And number four, Callista's Sentinels. They do more than just roam around looking creepy. If the Sentinel gains vision of an enemy or an ally, it will grant you an assist. Or, if your sentinel spots an enemy jungler, get executed, it'll give you the kill instead. Our next tip involves a death indicator, and it applies specifically to Cho'Gath, Zed, and Duskblade of Drakthar. With Cho'Gath, once you hit level 6 and have your ultimate off cooldown, enemies will display an indicator around them for when your feast is able to kill them instantly, so you can be sure to never let anyone escape with a sliver of health. Zed's ultimate also has a similar type of indicator that shows a shuriken above someone's head when his ultimate will kill them. And as well with the new Duskblade of Drakthar, it will also show an indicator when it will kill the target, so when playing those champions or using Duskblade, you can be sure to never let anyone escape with a tiny bit of HP left. Tip number 6 involves a pretty simple animation cancel using Fiora. On Fiora, you're able to cast Repost mid-dash in any direction which can be a really useful way to approach a target when you're afraid of getting kited, or if you maybe just want to hit the slow a little bit faster on your opponent. Next up at number 7 we have some things involving Thresh's Lantern. First off, his Lantern counts as an object, meaning that it can be teleported to for an interesting teleport option for your top laner. But as well, it also counts as terrain, meaning that you can use it to body block people into a tough spot for maybe to land your hook on them or to kite them a little bit more. This especially works in between the tower and wall on the bottom lane outer turret and is a great way to maybe land a hook or a flay on an unexpected target. For our 8th tip it's going to be a little bit more of a fun one as we head over to ARAM. On the Howling Abyss map there's a location just past the second bush at middle where if you position properly you can walk up close to the wall and you can actually clip inside of it making yourself almost invisible. It's a pretty neat place to hide for anyone trying to initiate like fiddlesticks or maybe if you just want to throw out a skill shot from there. And I'm back for number 9. Now this one is a doozy. Shackle boxes, yeah? You all know what they are. They're not usually that intimidating because most movement spells can just jump right through them and kill them. But 
If you stack two shako boxes up on each other, then they will either cancel or bug almost every single movement ability in the game. It is absolutely insane. It is possibly the strongest type of CC that there is. Right into number 10, one of my personal favorites. While Pantheon is flying high in his ultimate, perfecting his baking talent, he is completely immune to damage. This could be a Fiddlesticks Drain or a Karth Assault, a Zed Mark, anything at all. Once he goes up, he's coming down. Now a bonus fact for this round is that you can also use your mastery emote as Pantheon while you're in the air and it'll show up on the ground right before you land for some extra swag points on your superhero landing. For tip number 11, we're taking it to the jungle on Olaf and Trundle. Both of those guys have abilities that increase all forms of healing as opposed to something like Lifesteal or Spell Vamp, so be sure to save your smite for the red buff on them, especially in your early clears, since you'll get a massive heal from it. If you are starting at the red side in your first jungle clear, consider doing raptors before red buff after Krugs so that you can smite the red buff for a nice boost in your sustain to gank a little bit more early on. And at number 12, we're going to stick in a troll one just for fun. Anivia's wall and Trundle's pillar can be used to knock up your own teammates. Maybe if you want to cancel their backs or even allow an enemy Yasuo to ult on them. But I guess if you're using it as bait, then maybe it's not actually that troll versus an enemy Yasuo. And you could potentially bait him to jump in on you by knocking up your ally. Number 13. So I've already mentioned Callista, but she looks like a girl that needs some love, and so how about this one? A lot of Callista's power comes from her rend ability in fights. She stacks up a ton of spears and then rips your soul out, quite, quite literally. But did you know that you can QSS this and remove all of her current spears? It's an amazingly quirky counter that will surely make for some top 5 plays. For number 14, we're going to take a closer look at the clockwork ballerina herself, Oriana. Now, Oriana has always been a staple mid pick. Some people, however, have trouble keeping track of her ball, which can make her difficult to play but even more difficult to play against. A little known fact is that you can hide Oriana's ball inside walls and terrain to catch out any unexpected victims. And finally, the last one from me, number 15, is for the crazy clown from downtown, Shaco. Now the thing about Shaco is that he's usually a hit or a miss. In true clown fashion, they're either completely terrifying or mildly entertaining. And so when a Shaco wanders out of the bush with a third of a health left trying to gank you at level 4, you can rejoice knowing that he's definitely the latter. Or is he? If Shaco gets level 6 while in the jungle being unseen, he can then use his ultimate ability and send his clone into the lane. The enemy will see his clone as the last level he was seen at, and because he'll be seen as a pre-6, the enemy would never suspect it was a fake. This can lead to some pretty hilarious ganks. But that's all from me guys, thank you Jeremy so much for letting me help out with this video, and I'll let you round out the video from here. And for our 16th tip on the list, we're going to use something from Maokai. Similar to the Pantheon tip from earlier, when Maokai is traveling with his Twisted Advance, he becomes immune to all forms of damage. So if you time it right on a target, you can dodge things like Karthus Ultimate, Vi's Ultimate, or maybe just that last tick of Ignite as you run away. And that wraps up the list. Mega thanks to Arcadian for helping me with this video today, it definitely wouldn't have been possible without him. He does a lot of similar videos on his channel, so if you enjoyed the video, check him out in the description or with the annotation on your screen. And I'm sure you'll find some sweet stuff. Either way, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and if you didn't, please hit the dislike. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.